All right, well, happy Saturday to you, January the 27th. Our scripture reading for today is Exodus chapters 29, 30, and 31. Let's pray together. Holy Father, we come to you again, appreciative of the day that you've given. And Lord God, we ask for your blessings in it. We pray for your forgiveness. We pray for your Holy Spirit to lead us through your word and teach us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, chapter 29. We have the consecration of Aaron and his sons into the priesthood by special ordination service. The high priest would wear the ephod, the breast piece, the robe, the turban, all of these things that were spoken of in the previous chapter. The special offerings and actions were part of this ceremony to prepare them for the service that they would, they would grant to God or serve God with in the priesthood. In chapter 30, there's a description for building the altar of incense. So let me read you a little bit about the altar of incense. Just in front of the veil leading to the Holy of Holies was a golden altar called the altar of incense. This altar was about three feet high, a foot and a half wide and a foot and a half deep, made of shittim wood or acacia wood overlaid with pure gold. The altar of incense was used exclusively to burn incense morning and evening. A coal of fire from the brazen altar was placed on this altar each morning and incense put on it. Only the high priest was permitted to offer incense, a type of intercessory prayer that ascended toward heaven day and night. The altar of incense was the smallest piece of furniture in the tabernacle, and as such, it may seem insignificant, but... It was symbolic of Christ as our intercessor. It is through Him that the praise as well as the prayers of undeserving people become precious to God. All right. So going forward in chapter 30, an atonement price of half a shekel for each man must be taken whenever the people are counted for a census. The bronze basin for the priest to wash in before, this, before serving in the tabernacle is spoken of. So let me read you a little bit about that. Before a priest officiated in the tabernacle, he approached the laver of brass and that contained water to cleanse his hands and his feet. The laver was symbolic of the Word of God that both reveals our sin and is the cleansing power in our lives. Okay, so um, going on in chapter 30, uh, the instructions of how to make the holy anointing oil and, and what it should be used for are given, and also the ingredients for a sacred incense. In chapter 31, the craftsmen appointed by God, filled with His Spirit, with wisdom, understanding, and ability in every craft to accomplish the work of the tabernacle and all its abilities, uh, all its articles, were Bezael, and Aholiab. These men were named by God, called and gifted for the job that needed to be done. Think about that for just a moment. God always provides a worker for the work. Could it be you for the work that the Lord has called you to? He has gifted you, he filled you with His Spirit and wisdom, understanding and ability in order to accomplish the work that He gave you. Turn to Him, ask Him what He would have you do, and then follow Him with all your heart. Further on in chapter 31, there was um, observing the Sabbath was to be a continual sign of God's covenant with Israel. Six days of work and one day of rest and worship. Anyone violating the Sabbath was in effect denying the covenant and would suffer death. Again, God reaffirms creation in six days here. In verse 18, it says that Moses receives the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God. Okay, so our thought for today is ignoring God's Word always leads to deception or misconception. And Christ is revealed through the laver Christ is revealed as both the container and the dispenser of living water. Jesus cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. 
ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's John chapter 7 and chapter 15. God bless you. Have a great day.